Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service, the 2nd of May, 2021. Boy, this year's certainly flying by. But once again, a privilege to meet with you in your homes, to share God's word, God's message. I pray that you are truly blessed this morning as we hear his word and his message. Just a reminder, next week would be a communion, communion service. So please bring along your elements as we share together in the banquet, the heavenly banquet that God has prepared for us. So just be blessed as we share together. We are looking at starting Bible studies again, um, but watch out. I'll send it through on the group and then we can take it from there. Um, but yeah, um, trying to get back to normal as best as we can. The protocols are still a bit of a hindrance, um, but we'll see where we go. So let's turn to our worship service this morning, starting with our call to worship, taken from Psalm 22. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise Him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before Him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and He rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before Him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve Him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim His righteousness to a people yet unborn, for He has done it. Amen. Let us pray, shall we? Father God, what a privilege it is to worship You. Oh, I just thank You. We thank You, Lord, that You are our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer and our Friend. We thank you that we can just be in your presence, acknowledging you, uplifting you, just saying, here we are, Lord, to worship you. Father, we are so thankful for this new day, um, for the showers that have fallen down here in the Eastern Cape, um, the change of season, moving into winter. Oh, the blessing of each other, the blessing of encouragement, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The, oh, Lord, just thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us to save us, to redeem us, to set us free. Father God, we are so, so grateful. Father, we pray this morning that in our sinfulness, that you will redeem us, that you'll wash us with the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord, we have to sacrifice. We need to let go of the things that we like. You know, the desires of the flesh, um, our sinfulness. We need to repent and turn to you. We need to walk a closer walk with you. A sacrificial life as Jesus sacrificed himself for us. So Lord, help us with your Holy Spirit. Guide us, encourage us, walk with us. Just, Lord, let us see your grace. Let us see all that you are. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. Open our hearts and our minds, Lord, that as we read the scriptures this morning, may we just know your grace. And Father, may we be so thankful that we just walk with you, praising you and honoring you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from Acts, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Acts 8, 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Peter ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said. Unless someone explains it to me. 
So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is this prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with, what the very, with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared as a, at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Just that far this morning, and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. A fascinating reading, one that I've never ever preached on. Um, yeah, I've been in the game a few years now, and I've never even touched on this passage. But it's interesting. There's so much in there. Um, the more I read it, there were a couple of things that jumped straight out at me, which I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, but just, yeah, just I challenge you go and go and read it, because the more I read it, the more I saw. Um, and God just opened more and more for me. So go and read it, Acts chapter 8, 26 to 40. God, allow God to reveal what He wants you to see and learn. But for today, with God as my guide, I'm going to unpick a message that sort of lies between the lines of the passage, if you like. A few points that may seem diverse, but yet just come together in an amazing way. The first thought that I want to raise is probably best summed up in another verse from Scripture, found in Proverbs 16, verse 19, and says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. You and I, we have a plan. We just want to go forth, and this is what we want to do, and this is how we want to do it. But God's the designer. God's the master planner, and He puts our feet exactly where he wants them to be. And in a sense, this ties in to Matthew 28, the commandment of the Lord to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. <laughs> Confused yet? I hope so, because this is only going to get better. Allow me to shed some light. In our passage, we find Philip minding his own business. Well, to be honest, we don't know what he was doing. Um, but earlier on, it says he was in Samaria, and he was doing what he was doing. And then suddenly an angel of the Lord tells him to go south to the road, the desert road, from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then later in verse 29, again, we read the Holy Spirit tells him, Philip, go to the Ethiopian's chariot and stay with it. I hope you're starting to get a bit of a clearer picture yet. If not, in short, the passage is about sharing the gospel. Being in the right place at the right time with the right message, which most of us, to be honest, want to do. We'd love to share the gospel. We'd love to share what Jesus does in our lives. But more often than not, we end up missing the boat. We walk into brick walls and we just get so frustrated. Um, but I think this morning, I want to ask us, do we know why we find it so tough? My theory is pretty simple. We try and do it on our own. We try and do it on our own. We decide the fish that need to be caught, how they need to be caught, when they need to be caught, and we even try and clean them and wash them and do the whole thing all on our own. Remember Proverbs? We plan our course. We have our own agenda. So 
I mean, what do we learn out of that? What do we? What can we take away from that? Well, simply, in our passage, Philip was guided by an angel of God, and then by the Spirit of God, to a man who was ready, ready to receive, ready to hear, a man whose heart had been prepared by God, a man with a need for salvation, saying, explain it to me. You see, very often, as much as we want to, and as much as we'd like to share the message, we are just not prepared. We have not paused and asked God who He wants us to share with. We have not listened to or even heard or seen God's prompting. We go in cold, and more than likely, we've not even prayed about it. We haven't said, Lord, who do you want me to speak to? Where do you want me to be? Who do you want me to talk to? Prepare hearts, Lord. Open, soften hearts. Whatever it is. It's no wonder we find it so tough to share the gospel. And I hope you're starting to see the, pro the problem. We plan instead of following God's plan. Philip did. He listened to the angel, followed the Holy Spirit, and he finds an Ethiopian reading Isaiah. In fact, it's Isaiah 53. Um, go and read it. It's really amazing. It's the, the crucifixion. I'll get to that a bit later on his way back from worship. He'd been to the temple, and he still didn't understand. So, and that, <laughs> so I want to just read a couple of verses again. Listen to what was said. Listen to the discussion. Verses 30 to 31. Then Philip ran up to the chariot. Now, I mean, he went with a passion. He ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The story unfolds from that. We know that. Philip expounds the passage, explaining it all, taking the Isaiah passage. And as a starting point, he began where the eunuch's need was and then shared the story, the full story, the good news of Jesus. The outcome, <laughs> a believer baptized and yeah, then Philip disappears into thin air. Now, I don't know, I doubt, doubt, doubt we do, we'd, we'd disappear into thin air if we shared the gospel. But seriously, the crux of the second point is a multifaceted question. Do we understand? A similar question to the one Philip posed the Ethiopian. Do you understand? Do we understand enough to know and know enough of the story to share it? Do we understand enough to listen, to listen, to listen to the question? And then to answer the question. In our passage, for example, the Ethiopian is pretty specific when he comes to answering Philip. He says, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Philip obliges, starting with the very passage. He starts with the question and expands it to what he knows and the journey that he's on. He expands with his personal experience. Do we understand this question? Because out of these, these interactions, you know, we, we need to get over the thing that we've got to catch, save, and wash all by ourselves. We need to remember that we received a link in the chain. And, you know, all these interactions have an impact. They're life and death interactions. You know, the bottom line is Philip shared what he knew. Nothing more, nothing less. He didn't add, he didn't take away. That's the beauty of sharing with someone that God has prepared. He has prepared that person. And for that matter, he has prepared you. Yeah, he's prepared the receiver and the sharer. Share your story, share your journey, share what you know. It's not about knowing scripture inside out and back to front and in, you know upside down. Share your story before God at conversion, your experience with God since then, and what God means to you, and what God is doing in your life. It's about what you believe. Like they say, you can't sell something 
you don't believe in. The third thing, last thing I want to share with you this morning is the answer is just answer the question. You know, we sometimes get too theological and too clever and too smart and we Bible punch and we go off at tangents. Don't do it. Be like Philip. Answer the question. He took Isaiah 53, an amazing passage, the suffering and glory of the servant, Isaiah's prophecy of Jesus and his crucifixion. And then he filled in all the gaps. What happened? You know, this is what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about Jesus. He went to the cross. He died. He rose again. We've seen him. He shared his experience. Again, just over the last couple of weeks, it's just a message that is ingrained in me at the moment. This idea of our religiosity of our point of view. And we do it this way and you do it that way. No, no, no. But what is our testimony of the risen Christ? The risen, crucified Christ. And what does that mean in our lives? Acts 8.35 puts it like this. Then Philip began with a very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. We don't need to be clever. Just real. So in conclusion this morning, our takeaway for today, rather simple. We need to listen to God. He's stuffed, still voice, his angels, the Holy Spirit, and be guided by that. We need to always be prepared to share the message, the good news. Peter puts it this way, he says, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Listen to that again, to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. We need to share one message, one united, clear message, the good news of the risen Christ crucified. Or as Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. Simple, 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 between the lines message. Listen, be prepared, and share. Finished in clock. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Father God, why do we complicate things so much? Why do we make things so difficult, so hard? <coughs> why do we make it bigger than it is? Why do we always have to add our slot? Lord, teach us today to be like Philip. To listen, to go, to answer. To do our bit. To do our bit. So Lord, thank you for your word and your message this morning. May we be candle bearers, light sharers. May we be salt to the earth. May we walk in joy and abundance. May we acknowledge you as Christ, our Lord and Savior, so that people may see us and ask us why. Teach me, please, said the eunuch. Explain, please. Father, may our desire be that that question comes across our path more and more. 
as we reflect you in a lost, dark and broken world. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you've been truly blessed. Um, yeah, Jesus loves you. And because he loves you, he wants you to share his love with the world. Just, he loves you. You're his child. You, ah, I can't stress it more than that. Just listen. Just listen. He'll tell you where he wants you to be. So I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's world. Amen. <clears throat>